well, it's hard to imagine, you know, writing a whole novel that takes you years to write and then just handing the whole thing over to somebody else, knowing that a lot of it has to go and it has to be very different. But I'll tell you, I, I get so attached to my characters and particularly to the ones here in Family Linen that at the end of writing a book like that, I just, I feel like it's a, a little death. I mean, I put the manuscript in a box, you know, FedEx it to New York. And I just feel like that's their coffin, kind of there they go. And so it's so exciting to me to have a resurrection, you know, coming. And I do believe that um, there's such a profound difference between genres that uh, if you're going to give something over to another genre, you just have to really kiss it goodbye and really give it. And so I'm just delighted to hand this over to Clorinda, who is so full of spunk and imagination and talent herself. And because uh, I know she's going to make something profoundly, utterly hers out of it. And that's the way it's got to be if it's going to be good. It's the way it's got to be. I was so happy when Clorinda told me that she wanted to shoot this film in North Carolina. And of course, she is from North Carolina. The book is set here. And it really means so much to me that it's going to be shot here. It really does. Um, and I think place is important. The idea of the small town where everybody knows you and, and who your family was and goes back in time. I mean, the past is very important. In fact, the, um, the little epigraph at the beginning of this book is um, the, from L.P. Hartley. The past is another country. They do things differently there. And so this is an exploration, really, of the past and what it has to do with the present and how our past and our family past and the place itself has affected us and, and influenced us. And I'm just so glad we get to have the real place because the past is so connected to the place and our families are also connected to place. Well, I'm, I'm interested uh, in kind of gutsy women, <laughs> I guess. So I do tend to have, uh, you know, women who will speak their mind and be real upfront about things and take certain kinds of risks, I guess. There's usually, there's usually somebody kind of like that um, in most of my books. Well, because I think, to me, that's really the basis of narrative. That's the basis of a good story is there's something that's not quite being told. There's a secret. And with, uh, with a work of this sort, it's like you're, you, the viewer, or you, the reader, are going to be in on it. You're going to learn all the dirt. You're going to see all the dirt on the family linen. You're going to know what it is. And that's just, and we all have our own, too. And so it's just something that's going to make us complicit in the story. And it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be psychological. You know, it's going to be about love and death and the whole shebang. I am so tired of these movies that have, you know, cartoons and action figures. And it's like everybody has become infantilized by the movie industry. And this is going to be a movie about real women, you know, middle-aged women who have got a lot, who have lived a lot and have got a lot to say. And, you know, I hope a lot of women are going to go, middle-aged women are going to come see it, too, because we got the money and we got the time. <laughs> you know, I want to see us all in there. I'm excited about that. Well, most of my books are set generally in the Piedmont South. They're either set in the mountains where I'm from or they're set... Um, you know, basically Virginia, North Carolina, kind of in the mountains, maybe sort of in the foothills. And Family Linen is set in um, just kind of southwest Virginia. You know, somebody once said the south runs on the Nile. You know, there's all kind of things we're not knowing, not talking about, hiding, whatever. And so the well and the hiding, you know, the secret in the well is just perfect to me for a way of talking about uh, families and, and Southern life, I guess.
It's so funny because, you know, in a little town like that, you do know everything. Somebody does, whether it's the whether it's the RN at the hospital, you know, or the dental hygienist or the beauty shop operator. They hear it all, they know it all. And it's uh you know more, you know, a more complexity, more of a sense of real life lived in a small town like that, you know, than you do in the most sophisticated city. You really do. When you got in trouble, you get home from school, everybody already knew it. Or this, you know, and this is great. It also can drive you crazy when you're growing up in a little town like this. You know, as in this book, the sun is just like, ah, I can't get away with anything here. But I remember when my, um, I went to see my daddy in Grundy, Virginia, where I was from, and uh, I had a kind of a headache, and so I went downtown to get an aspirin or something. And by the time I got back home, the next door neighbor, June Belcher, was standing in the yard, and she said, well, I hear you've been to the Rexall.